think about this. When you play catch with someone, someone throws a baseball to you and you catch it, you look at it, you throw the ball back. Wouldn't it be weird if when you had the ball, you went, I now own the ball. And then you throw it at the other person and they go, I own the ball. No, you understand that pretty soon you're gonna throw the ball and someone else is going to have it. Well, like owning a home is kind of like playing a much slower game of catch because eventually someone else will probably own the home, right? So yeah, you might get paid for it, but that money isn't yours either because eventually you're gonna spend it and eventually someone else will have it and eventually you'll have someone else's. So again, this idea that you own anything is what's in the way of you enjoying it. How weird would a game of catch be if you felt this is mine? No one can take this from me. Don't touch this, right? I was talking to someone the other day about this. How much more, I don't know if anyone else has this, but how much more do you enjoy a library book than a book you bought? Because a library book, you know you have to read it in a certain amount of time and you're going to give it back. There's something about you that fully understands this is not yours. But there's this thing where when you go, well, this is mine, many people go, this is mine, so I don't need to read it right now. And then they put it in the, the book the bookshelf. <laughs> the bookshelf, they call it. That's the new, the new kicking thing they got out there, the bookshelf. So they go, okay, I, I'll put it in the bookshelf. And then this part of you that wants to keep owning things because you're under the illusion you own something, buys another book and puts it in the bookshelf. And then you buy another one and put it in the bookshelf. And maybe you'll read one. I'm not saying you don't read books that you buy, but eventually someone else is gonna have it. And many of the stuff that we have, we end up completely donating or selling to someone else. So we still are borrowing it. So then you start to get into what else really is not from a, from a, a source based place. I'm not talking like this isn't sometimes people hear this and think I'm like being a socialist. No one owns everything. So we all should have, I'm, I'm not talking politically in any way possible. I'm talking about psychologically and soulfully what is actually true. And some of the things that cause pain is the belief that I own. And in most cases, I own just means you can't have. That's almost what I own actually means. I'm not saying you can't have things. I'm not saying don't own anything, but I am saying it's the belief that this is mine and not yours that creates so much more hoarding, so much more separation, so much more of the belief that if this is taken from me, I'm not going to be en enough. Right? So we buy another book, put it on the shelf, another one, put it on the shelf. And then you start to do this with other things. You start to go, hey, okay, are we a couple now? Oh, good. Okay. You're mine. Great. Now I feel entitled to tell you what you have to do. And you have to, you, and I have to check in with you everything I'm doing. There starts to be this thing. Now, I'm not saying don't be in a relationship. I'm not saying you can't have relationships. In fact, if you really hear this, you could have an incredible relationship because as Maya Angelou says, the highest truth is that love liberates. Love liberates. I'm here to offer you a space to be fully yourself. And it says, I love you, as Maya Angelou says, even if you're gonna be in another country, even if you're over there, I love you. I would like to be with you, but I love you even if someone else is going to be with you. If your highest is to be with someone else, I love you so much that I liberate you and don't think of you as you're supposed to be mine. Like in her story, she talks about her mom is sick and her mom is dying and she went to her mom and said, I liberate you to go if you feel like you need permission to go. And she came back home and then felt something, came back to the hospital and her mom had passed away. It was as if she liberated her mom. This is how nature works. There's no binding in nature. Trees don't go, mine, not yours. And not most of the things that we really enjoy, we don't necessarily own it, right? Like we don't have that mindset. In my book, The Illusion of Money, I talk about the illusion of ownership as far as bank accounts. One of the reasons I see so many people struggle with abundance is they have a bank account that they say, this is my bank account. But just in saying, this is my bank account, you're saying everyone else's isn't mine. So I'm this small hoarded thing that's right here, small, and everything else's isn't mine, 
right? So you start to hold this money because you think it's yours. So you start to not spend it fully, cut yourself off from your soul. Like what if you need some of that money to fully move into the highest version of yourself to, to buy the right equipment, to do the music you need to do, or to buy the right artwork or to buy the right support for you to be what you need or to buy the right coach or to buy the right space or the right fitness therapist or the right whatever you need or nutritionist whatever would take you to the highest version of you if you go no no no, this is my money you might be cutting yourself off from the greatest version of yourself you've ever seen and what if you stop holding it and go no what am i what am i what if you take yourself to a place where you are here to liberate others so even people that tell you they don't like you, even people that are knocking you, you liberate them to have that opinion. You are not here to hoard that they shouldn't have the right to have that opinion. It has nothing to do with you. I liberate you to say that about me. I liberate you to judge me. What if you could keep liberating the world until you rise out of the, the old story of the small version of you? Can you feel that? Let's go to the liberated version of you. That's what's true. There is no such thing as ownership as far as soulful nature works. What about, what about, what about your thoughts? Do you own your thoughts or are they just passing through? Are they my thoughts? I mean, the second I say that's my thought, I better hold on to it, right? Like if everyone just closes their eyes and takes a deep breath in and releases it and you let yourself just have some thoughts. How cool. I just have some thoughts. There are thoughts there. Now notice the difference in the energy of there are thoughts here and then there's my thoughts. Ooh, wait a minute. If it's my thought, then all of a sudden it better not leave. And what if my thought is a negative thought? But it's mine, so if I lose it, I don't know who I am. So even though it's a negative thought, I have to grab it because it's still part of my identity. And what if you just let thoughts be there and understand there's no such thing as you? I mean, still, I say this next part with an obvious boundary, but is it my body? Like your body digests, your body does these different things. You feel this thing, so you're sitting there going, my body, my body, my body. So the ego is trying to run a body that knows how to do everything. When you say, I'm sick, no, the body is healing itself. The body is. This idea of ownership where you attach an I to everything, how can it change if it's you? If you are someone who says, I'm this sickness, I'm this victim, I'm this weight, I'm this smallness, I'm this story. Boom, how can it change? How can God get in there and change it if you're holding on to it? You're saying it's mine. This is me. Oh, me. This is me. Anything in uh, my addiction. We even say anything we do more than once, we start to call it mine. If you have one cup of coffee, you go, I'm going to have a cup of coffee. But people that have it every morning go, I got to have my coffee first. Now you've identified yourself to a drink. Isn't that weird? I gotta, have my, I gotta have my coffee. I gotta have my night drink. I gotta have my wine and then we'll talk about it. But once I have my nightly ice cream, well, you're attaching yourself to a limitation, right? You are just love. You are just this moment and you have a cup of coffee, even if you've had one every day since you were three years old. It's a cup of coffee. It's the new moment. It's just a cup of coffee. Even if you plan to have five that day, it's that sip. You don't have to take on more than this moment. You don't have to keep moving so far into the future and say, mine, I, my identity, my story, my history. <laughs>